people, okay? Kent, do motorcycles get into your blood? Yep. And it's a transformation inside, right? Okay, watch this now. What we're saying here is that when we give our minds to Christ, that He transforms us. By the way, it's the same word found in Matthew chapter 17 of the transfiguration that happened on the mount. It's a metamorphosis. We're changed from inside out. And that's what the Holy Spirit does for us. Well, how does He do it? Well, I think He uses God's Word. I think we meditate on it. We memorize it. We make it part of every day. And it matures us. We place ourselves in that position where Christ can talk to us and it changes us from the inside out. That's what the Bible is saying. Well, thirdly, we have to submit our will. Now, uh, uh, let me just kind of talk to you for a minute. Uh, We've talked about this before, but normally around New Year's Eve, I ask if you've made any New Year's resolutions. How many of you, here it is September, how many of you are still keeping your New Year's resolution? Raise your hand. No, put them back down. I didn't think so. All right. Do you know how long a New Year's resolution lasts? A week or two. A week or two. Oh, now here's something factual. It takes 66 days for a human being to change their behavior. It takes 66 days. So this year when you make a New Year's resolution, don't call it quits until day 67. All right? Now, the reason I say that is because many people talk about willpower. Uh, but I don't think there's any such thing. All right? Uh, we can't just will something done. When we submit our bodies as living sacrifices, we're to allow the Holy Spirit to transform our minds. And then we submit our will to Him. Uh, the mind controls our body, uh, and your will controls your mind. But as much as the asking the Lord for some willpower, I think half of us need to ask the Lord for some won't power. Did you hear that? Uh, in, in addition to asking the Lord to help your willpower, you need to ask Him to give you some won't power. I won't do that anymore. Uh, that thing is dead to me. And I've used those phrases before. As we take a look at this, uh, I think some of the things that help us submit our will to the living Lord God is prayer. Honest and disciplined prayer. Uh, Not my will, but thine be done. Um, Pray about everything. um, And let Him have His way in everything. Uh, Begin each day with a surrender. Uh, Read God's Word. Let it transform your mind. Yield your plans to Him. Uh, Wednesday night, I'm sorry many of you missed it, but Wednesday night we spoke of the deacon, Philip, who was um, in the midst of a revival. And they were preaching and teaching and seeing people saved in Jerusalem. But then there came some persecution, and he went out to Samaria. Uh, and he, the great revival as he was preaching, and people were saved in Samaria. And then all of a sudden, the Lord says, I want you to go out to Gaza Strip. It's a desert. Who's out there? One person. Just one person. But Philip yielded his will to God. And God can use any soul that is sold out to him. Amen? All right. Now, let me get to some real preaching now, okay? Smile. Okay. All right. You ready for this? There are some practical things here, and let me kind of buzz through them. When you take a look at the spiritual gifts that are mentioned here, one of them is ministry. Very simply, some of us have a practical spiritual gift of helping somebody else. Have you ever said this to anybody? Wow, that blessed me. You ever said that? Has anybody ever said that to you? That blessed me. All right, That's what the Bible is talking about. Just simple, honest, helping somebody else. Teaching. Uh, instruction by word and by deed. Exhortation. Building somebody up. You know, if you gave me a bulldozer, I could tear just about any building down. I don't have to measure. I don't have to calculate. I just hit the throttle and I can knock a building down. It's easy to tear somebody down. It's hard to build somebody up. 
And biblically, we as Christians are to build each other up, encourage them, giving, giving with liberality. In other words, cheerful giving, not begrudging. Leading with diligence, mentoring with stick to itness. I want to ask our church leaders this. I want to be honest. What did being a church leader cost you this week? What did being a church leader cost you this week? Because a ministry that costs you nothing accomplishes nothing. Leading with diligence. I believe that's the message that we're getting there. Mercy with cheerfulness, without uh, discouragement. Uh, Love without hypocrisy. Shunning evil and clinging to good. That's a simple Bible message, isn't it? Uh, Kindly affection. Brotherly love. Uh, Just simply giving a hug to somebody else. Uh, Honoring each other. Preferring one another. Uh, Diligence. Fervence. In it to win it, so to speak. Serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Continuing steadfastly in prayer. Distributing to the needs of the saints. Can I say this? The needs of the saints are multifaceted. Not only financial support, but prayer, physical, emotional. Uh, I like to pray for people holding their hands. Do you? Just a little bit of encouragement. Uh, I like that. Uh, When Judd kisses me goodbye, he does that too. You know what? I don't know which one's more meaningful to me. But they've taught him that when he kisses somebody goodbye, to give them a pat on the back also. Anybody patted you on the back lately? Reach in front of you and pat somebody on the back real quick. All right? Give somebody a pat on the back. All right? Listen, this is the church. And the church has spiritual gifts to use as tools, not as toys, not as weapons. But how do you get those spiritual gifts? Well, first off, and if you've never heard this before, hear me very clearly and very quickly. We can't receive spiritual gifts of helping or teaching or exhorting one another or mercy unless we get the best spiritual gift to start out with. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come into him and fellowship with him and he with me. If we don't have Christ in our hearts, all of this is a moot point. So we begin with Christ in our hearts. And the Holy Spirit then gives us spiritual gifts for serving. Hey, what is your church like? I'm hoping it's like a toolbox, a tool room, that you and I are doing the work of God because He's given us spiritual gifts. Okay, I'm going to finish with these last two questions. Ready? What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Secondly, what I'm about to do, is it serving Christ or is it serving myself? I'm going to ask you to bow your hearts and your heads. And as we sing in just a moment, I extend to you an offering, uh, an invitation that if you don't know Christ is your Savior, please step out by faith. And the preacher and you can sit down on this front pew and pray and ask Christ to come into your heart. We invite you to do that, please. You need to have a church home. We invite you to come and be part of Silver Grove. If you've never followed the Lord and believers' baptism, we need to plan one of those baptismal services, I hope, before the end of the year. You come and be part of that. It's a step of obedience. But the invitation is extended to you. And we ask you to respond publicly. Because no disciple in the church ever followed Christ without making some form of a public display of that faith. And so, Lord, as we bow our hearts and our heads, we pray, Lord, that you'd find us offering our bodies as living sacrifices that our minds are being transformed and our will is subject and yielded to you. So, Lord, we pray that that Spirit could fall fresh on us today as we seek to do what Jesus would do 
we answer the question, is what I'm about to do serving Christ and his church or myself? So bless those decisions within our hearts now. In that precious name of Jesus, we ask it. It's hymn number 389, and some of you probably know it by heart. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Let's just sing the first stanza twice, okay? Stand with me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. 